What up you guys, it's Violet Taylor here and welcome back to Let's Catch a Vibe. Now, I hope everyone's feeling great, feeling amazing, feeling vibey. Yeah, pretty much you guys can tell this is the title of the video, my spoiler review of Thor, Love and Thunder. I did my spoiler free review on Thursday when the movie did come out. So it's been, what, four days, three days since the movie come out, this being the recording of Monday. But yeah, pretty much, um, mm, I, oh, it's hard, it's really hard, because I know I'm going to get a lot of backlash for this. But anyway, regardless, I had to talk about it because it explains a lot. But anyway, I liked this film. I did like this film. There's a major thing in that I didn't like, and I think that takes away from the whole character, but I liked this film. I rated it a good eight, eight, nine. I can see where it's coming from, but the MCU has ruined Thor. Now, you might be wondering why. So, pretty much I'll explain that in a second. I am going to be going over the two post credit scenes as well. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. But yeah, pretty much we open the film um, finding about Gore's origin story. Um, again, if you guys don't know about it, I would definitely recommend checking out the... Is it Jason Aaron's Thor books, I think? But anyway, um, pretty much we end up finding out that his daughter's about to die. He's about to die. All these people are dead. He's wandering in the desert with his daughter. Pardon me. His daughter dies. He ends up stumbling on this like oasis, um, which we think is a mirage at first, but it is real. Um, and yeah, he stumbles upon his god, um, and pretty much he thinks he's god celebrating, um, them, but he's literally just a dick, which most gods are, we even found out that Kratos found out that most gods are dicks, they don't care, <laughs> they literally get the praise and all their power from, you know, you praying to them and you asking for stuff, that's all they do. And you find out that pretty much Gore is like, yeah, listen, I renounce you. You're a dick. I renounce all gods. All gods are going to die. We do see the body, which is a cool Easter egg, which looks, from what I could see, uh, pretty much we find that the god that Gore prays to has just, sm like, sm I was about to say smitten, smited somebody that had the Necro or Black Sword. And we find out they looks visually, from what I could see, exactly the same as in the comics. But in the comics, both the gods died. And then Gore took the sword from one of them. I think, did he slay the other one while he was weak? I think the other one wasn't actually dead, dead. But anyway, good origin for Th Gore. I liked that. Again, Christian Brown brings his A game. I might not have liked his Batman, but man, he brings his A game to every role that he plays. But yeah, anyway, moving on, we find, um, we come to Thor. Now, Thor's been through an absolute journey through the MCU. Lost his mom, lost his brother three times, lost his father, lost his sister that he didn't even realise he had at first. Lost Heimdall, lost his whole planet, pretty much. Well, obviously the ones that they say. But anyway, moving on, we find that Thor's pretty much become like a bit of a pacifist. Like, he doesn't know what to do with his life. He hasn't got a cause to fight for now or anything like that. So, we end up finding out that obviously he's been with the Guardians. So, you know, he's doing his thing with the Guardians. Obviously, he's the most powerful one. So, he's overshadowing them a lot. Uh, which you can tell by Star-Lord's face. He's like, yeah. When, he's, when it's time to leave, you can tell that he's just whoop doesn't even wait for Thor to speak but yeah we do get a bit of a cool action scene now I do want to preference that I do like Taika Waititi's brightness he brings the color to the film and makes it makes it pop I can't lie he doesn't make it pop he's good at action scenes as well from Thor Ragnarok so we know he's good at action scenes the soundtrack action scenes um, the color pop really really good I do like his art style his direction questionable but anyway um yeah we end up going on a bit of a journey where we find, find about Thor um I'm trying to think, where did the film go after that? Because it's like, you know, there's like, like six, seven chunks of the film. Um, yeah, I do want to preference that this is the bit of the film that I didn't like. They've made Thor into like a fumbling buffoon. Like, to the point where, yeah, I understand he's a god. And he's not really accustomed to like Earth stuff like that. But they've made him a bumbling fool. Like, I was literally sitting there. I was like, the next joke's coming now. And then the next joke's coming now. And then the next joke's coming now. Like, if you're in a movie... Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all up for comedy movies. Comedy movies is my second genre other than action, comedy movie, thriller. That's like the top three for me. Um, but yeah, they're making him bumbling buffoon. A real bumbling idiot. Like, anyway, we end up finding out that... Um, obviously, Gore's going around doing his thing. Um, we find out that pretty much um, all these guys are being destroyed. We even find out to the point where um, Sif is still alive and she's tracking down this Gore the God Butcher to try and kill him. 
Um, we do get a cool Easter egg of a monster. Um, I can't remember what he was. Well, he was a god. It's when they go to that ice planet to go and help Sif that we find out that it's pretty much exactly the image or the creature design is taken exactly out from one of the Thor uh, books. I think it's Jason Aaron's run. Really, really good Thor writer, by the way, in the comic books. But anyway, um, yeah, so obviously Thor's alert now that there's people going around killing gods. We do come to Jane Foster, and I liked Jane Foster's character in this because it relates some from what the comics. Pretty much we find out she's dying of cancer. So, she's trying to find a way to kind of deal with it on her own. We do get that character, which I can't remember what her name is. She was from WandaVision. Her geeky friend. We do get a little bit of a look for the professor as well, the one that was taken over by Loki um, in this film. But yeah, pretty much this is Jane dealing with that, you know, the fact that she's going to die. Um, chemo's not working. Yeah, she's going to die, basically. Um, so yeah, we end up not knowing that she got, she tries to do some Asgardian research. Uh, she's got some books and trying to find out about Mornia. And she finds out that it gives you good health. So she goes to New Asgard, which is pretty much New Jersey. We find out that obviously Valkyries have a good time kind of being the king but she's just sick of board meetings and stuff like that one thing in this film that i didn't like why did they make an ice cream shop called infinity cones with the infinity gauntlet as their signal pretty much overshadowing that listen people were blipped out for five years this is not something that people want to look at and remember People don't want to look at the Infinity Gauntlet and think, oh, shit, that's the thing that almost killed me. People don't want to look that. So I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I didn't take it personally, but I just didn't like that. I just didn't like it. But anyway, we end up finding out that Valkyrie's pretty much got the broken pieces of Molnir that's in a guarded, um, like, obviously, glass um, case. Obviously, there is guards there. But then when we get there, we find out that Jane Foster... Pretty much, um, the hammer speaks to her. It's been calling to her, drawing her in. So then we get the reforged Molnir, and then pretty much self-explanatory, she becomes Mighty Thor. Now, we do get um, Thor that does uh, rescue Sif and takes her to the um, you know new Asgard, which then becomes under attack by Gore the God Butcher. Bit of a cool action scene. Obviously, we see Thor and Jane meet up. They have their bit of like, you know, their funny gags, and we have a bit of a backstory between them that they did have a life before they ended up breaking up because they were just working so much. Like Thor was off being a god, and then she took up her science and stuff like that. She ended up writing a book about like black holes and the universe and stuff like that. Obviously, because knowledge of Thor and stuff like that. So that would have been really good. Um yeah, we have a bit of a cool action scene. We find um, out that Gore has taken the Asgardian children. Pretty much because we he knows that Stormbreaker is the only way and the only power source that allows him to open a Bifrost to Infinity. Now, this was really cool to see. And they absolutely smashed it with the design of Infinity. If you guys don't know who Infinity is in the comic books, he's pretty much one of the astral, literally astral deities. Um... But yeah, really, really love that. Absolutely love the design. Love the colours there. Um, but yeah, pretty much we end up finding out that Thor, at this point, goes to the Council of Gods, um, which is called the... Damn it. Is it Omnipotent? I think it's called the Omnipotence. But yeah, really, really cool. I need to see the film again, or I need to wait till it comes on DVD to try and pause it. I was trying to capture who all these gods were. We saw a serpent. We saw... Was it one that was a god of dumplings, which was really cool? I mean, hey, it can be a god of food. <laughs> but yeah we end up finding out we go to this council of the gods um we have a speech from zeus which is done by russell crowe now mm, i thought his zeus was cool i think he was a bit he was a bit free though but yeah anyway i liked his thor we get a bit of a thing where they end up you know thor ends up saying listen you gods have forgotten who you are you're supposed to be helping mankind you know you want worship but you do nothing for it Get a bit of a fight scene there where we do see Jane Foster that she has the ability to break away more near and then do, 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 like, 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 summon it back basically. So I like the fact that she can do that, like, kind of cluster effect and then bring it back. That was really cool to see. Um, we end up finding out that they don't kill Zeus, but they do escape with his Thunderbolt, which was really, really cool to see. Um, we, they end up, th obviously, they end up finding out that that might have a, uh, an effect against, um, Gore the God Butcher. Pretty much, um, after that, they escape. Um, I did like the fact that earlier in the movie, Thor was gifted two goats. They did get very annoying towards the end of the film that they're just like, ah, ah, they're just screaming all the time. They are part of the Thor mythos, though, so it's really good to see those. They pretty much, um, 
they pretty much pilot the vessel that Stormbreakers in, so they can activate the like constant, um, constant like rainbow bridge effect when they're flying. That was really cool. It did make me think of Santa straight away, though. I'm not gonna lie to you. It made me thought of Santa straight away. But again, love the neon colors, the pot, the city, everything. The gods looked really, really cool. Absolutely love that. Then we end up finding out that we have to follow um, Gore to the Shadow Realm, which I absolutely loved, by the way. The fact that all the color palette just went zoom. Black and white, really, really loved it. But then again, we meet up with the obviously the final battle of you know Thor the God Butcher, and well, not the final battle. This is like the second to final battle. We end up finding that they go to visit Gore the God Butcher. He ends up stealing um, Stormbreaker. Um, we get a bit of really interesting dialogue because I liked Gore the I like Christian Bale's Gore the God Butcher. He he reminded me of like Stephen King's It. He was very he was very like loose. And very like, you know, he wasn't very stiff. He was like, zoof. He was like moving around and doing this. And he had the eyes glowing. Oh, he was, oh man. I have to make a separate video on that Gold of God Butcher. He was absolutely cold. But anyway, we end up finding out that he does find his way to infinity. Um, which is really, really cool. We do end up getting Jane that sacrifices herself. Which I think it was pretty much a way of her um, leaving the character. Um... But again, you wouldn't want to overshadow Thor um, either. But yeah, we end up finding out really, really cool scene. Um, we get a cool scene that I didn't actually remember that Thor actually imbues the Asgardian children because obviously he can give the blessing on any type of weapon, same as what Odin could do, which I found was really, really cool. I liked that, that he ble he literally blesses the kids in there. Um, we get Heimdall's son in there, which was cool to, cool to see that he's father. Thor could do this thing where he can have like the um, Heimdall vision where he can communicate in like an astral form because he's talking to the kids the whole time that they're pretty much being captured, um, which is really, really cool. Um, again, we get this scene. We do see the Living Tribunal again. His head's kind of like spinning on one of the statues in the background when they're fighting Gore. Mighty Thor, absolutely loved her character. Really, really cool. Um, but again, the MCU does what it always does. And what's that? Kills its villains. Yep. Yeah. Now they've got the multiverse. Don't need Gore the God Butcher. Don't need Thanos, even though they killed Thanos twice and brought him from another universe. Well, they brought the alternate timeline version of him shall we say not from another universe get it right but anyway now they've got the multiverse this is why i'm really scared for them to do dr doom I, I don't want him to fuck him up i don't want him to kill him i just don't want him to kill him he's such a badass character but anyway pretty much we end up getting to the end of the film um we get two end credit scenes the first one is pretty much uh zeus is sitting down after being hurt not dead just injured and he's pretty much saying okay right these people have forgotten about the gods and stuff like that they're too bothered with watching their superheroes in the sky it's about time we brought them down and made, made them remember who the gods are now zeus says a line when he says i want to see thor fall from the sky and then he says do it my son ah! and then we see hercules not gonna lie, Hercules' look is spitting image from the comic books. Really, really cool. The actor didn't look overly huge, but he doesn't need to be because, again, like, looks don't dictate how strong you are. But yeah, really, really cool end credit scene. So again, we're gonna find that in Thor 4, because it does say Thor will return, we're pretty much gonna see uh, Thor and um, Hercules fight, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Second end credit scene... Didn't really explain much, but it was nice to have, from what I can remember. We pretty much see um, Jane Foster, because obviously she became Thor, so she died in battle. So she went to Valhalla. So, we end up seeing Idris Elba's Heimdall, which pretty much he welcomes her here. And then there's gods in there. So, really, really cool. Again, they haven't kind of killed off the character. They've kind of just left them in suspense. Like, okay, we don't know what to do with you from the moment. You can always be brought back, but we're going to leave you pretty much in suspended animation. Kind of thing. We're going to leave you in another realm until we can think what to do with you. But yeah, overall, they just made Thor a bumbling buffoon. I did like this movie. Like I said, I like the soundtrack. I like the art direction, the art style with the neon, the colours, stuff like that. They even have a... One of the other things, they have a silly plot in here where... Pretty much Stormbreaker's jealous 
of Molnir, and I was just like, what? How can you have inanimate objects be jealous of each other? That made no sense. This is where the fun is just... Like, this film, if I had to describe it, is cranked up to 11. It's cranked up to 11. And I was just, just sitting there thinking, I know when the next joke's coming. I know when the next joke's coming. There it is. I could see it coming. And for me, if your comedy is like that, it shouldn't be in a comic book movie. Now, again... I'm going to make a bit of a movie how I feel like the MCU has ruined certain characters. So I won't I won't put it in this video. I'm going to end this video here. But yeah, I did like this film. But my only complaint majorly was... <sighs> I felt like Gore could have done more. But I did like his character what I, from what I saw. I did feel like he could have done more. But yeah, I'm going to kind of leave this video here, guys. I did love the movie. I don't want anyone to think that I hate the movie. I did like the movie. I just think it shouldn't have been ha, 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 ha funny. It should have been ha, ha, funny. But anyway... I'm going to leave this video here, guys. This is my spoiler review of, Lo of Thor, Love and Thunder. If you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button. If you didn't like the video, let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like the video. Do you feel the same about Thor, Love and Thunder, or did you absolutely love it? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, but yeah, pretty much, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new and join Team Let's Catch a Vibe. Also, if you are new, please don't forget to switch on the bell notifications. Get no follow up that below. But more importantly, don't forget to stay vibey, and I'll catch you all in the multiverse. Peace. Cheers.